The first thing that you need to add into your enclosure is bedding. I've added over 10 inches of safe spruce wood bedding. Other safe bedding types include unscented paper-based bedding, hemp and aspen. The first item I add to the enclosure is a multi-chamber hideout. These are very useful as they replicate what hamsters make in their burrows in the wild. They would have different chambers for different purposes. In one chamber they would store their food, another one they would use as a toilet and another one they would use as a nest. So once you're placed in your multi-chamber hideout, you're going to fill over the top with some bedding and you're going to compress it down so it can properly hold burrows. Make sure that your multi-chamber hideout is on stilts so when they decide to burrow underneath it, it won't crush them. Then I like to add some nesting material to one of the chambers so they can make their nest there. This is just some paper napkins and you can also add some toilet paper. Next I add the sand bath. All hamsters need a sand bath so they can clean themselves. You should never bathe hamsters in water. They use the sand to get the grease off their coats. Make sure you always place your sand bath on something that has stilts on top of a platform because it is very heavy and you wouldn't want your hamster to get crushed if they decided to dig underneath it. Then on top of another platform I place the wheel. The minimum size for a dwarf is 8 inches and for Chinese hamsters and Syrian hamsters the minimum is 11 inches. This is the Trixie 11 inch wheel that I'm using for my dwarf hamster. On top of another platform I'm making space for a dig box. Inside the dig box there's some beach chips. It's very important to provide your hamster with different digging materials and textures because it adds enrichment to their enclosure. And then at the front of the enclosure I dig into the bedding again to add another type of dig box. And again this one is on a platform. Next I just made sure the bedding was around this dig box because it was quite high up and hamsters don't have very good depth perception so you need to make sure everything is as level and as flat as possible. In the dig box there's just some coconut soil and a coconut hideout. So this is what the enclosure is looking like with all of the main items in that need platforms. And next I just add some nice soft hay. This makes the enclosure look really natural because it adds some greenery. And I just like to sprinkle this over the top of the bedding. Make sure you always place your bag of hay in the freezer for 48 hours just in case there's any bugs. This is what the enclosure looks like now. It looks really natural with all the hay that we added. Next we're going to add some more natural items. So the first thing that I add is a cork log. These are really great because they're a natural piece of wood so they do fit the natural hamster cage theme really well. Then I add a piece of bamboo root. This can be quite heavy so I have placed it on the multi-chamber hideout. The next thing I add to the enclosure is a PVC tunnel. This is really helpful if your hamster doesn't burrow because it can start them off and they can actually borrow from this tunnel. It's always good to add some hideouts in the sand bath so they can have some privacy. So I added this acorn hideout that's ceramic and I added another ceramic hideout as well which is a tea light holder. In this corner I added a DIY hideout that I made and then in the opposite corner I added another ceramic hideout and then in front of the wheel I added this little terracotta tunnel. Then next to the wheel I added another natural tunnel and another ceramic hideout. Then I placed this little cork mat which I painted with hamster safe paint and a little DIY foraging toy. Then I started to add all my favourite things like moss and some sprays. This is a pearl millet spray and I try and place sprays throughout the whole enclosure as many as I can because it's really helpful to provide some coverage to help hamsters feel safe and secure in their enclosure. If I notice he eats one spray all at once I will remove that and limit that type of spray. You should always provide your hamster with a large variety of sprays because they're very good enrichment because they can get the seed directly from the plant. And then to provide some more coverage, I added some apple branches. And then you can start to add all the different types of forage. So these are some dried apple leaves. There's not a limit on how much forage you provide for your hamsters, so you can just make it look as natural as possible. And I like to sprinkle it around the enclosure so it looks more natural. 
Then this is a herb mix that I sprinkle around as well. And finally you can add a flower mix and this provides a really nice natural pop of colour. And then of course you need to place your hamster's water dish on a flat surface so it can't get knocked over. And when I do a new setup I like to sprinkle their food around. And finally I added a chew toy. And this is the finished product.